for my next trick or tutorial. Uh, this is how to create the canvas wall hangings that you guys have seen me talk about selling in my shop. Um, I also sell them with doormats like as a set and it's an easy way to make money. Um, so I absolutely love the canvas wall hangings. These are more and more popular um, kind of now that the home decor market has become inundated with uh, hand-painted signs and vinyl signs more people are looking for alternative options for what they want so some easy alternative options are reverse canvas which I just did a tutorial on and canvas wall hangings um, home decor is such an awesome market to be in I know that a lot of people in this group do shirts uh, I personally don't really do apparel and the reason why is because I don't like all the variables of you know different materials the different problems that come with doing shirts, so on and so forth, having to special order them, um, et cetera. So home decor is such an awesome and thriving market and it's easy to adjust, which is what's really nice too. So I started out, if you've seen any of my videos, I started out doing wood burn bottle openers and then I moved into etched glassware and then I added signs and etched humidors and, you know, towels and coffee mugs and so on and so forth. And I'm constantly expanding in those avenues and kind of tweaking my designs to what actually sells um, and what's trending. So, you know, right now, Joanna Gaines is still hot. So Farmhouse is my main market, which is why my business is called Of Love and Ship Lab. Um... But the designs and stuff that I put together for you guys that I put in my shop are what's trending in other niches beyond farmhouse because I want you guys to have stuff that's actually going to sell. And I know that there is a certain like for some of that um, eclectic want to be bohemian style stuff. I don't really know what else to call it. Uh, but that's a pretty limited market for something that has longevity. And um, my goal is not to give you guys designs and stuff that are going to be outdated six months from now, a year from now. Um, so a lot of the stuff that I designed for you guys is designed to have a bit more evergreen in, um, in the handmade market so that you can still be carrying it for the next couple of years uh, as trends change because some things, some things do stay the same. Some people like uh, their specific type of decor and go with that. So this tutorial is going to be on how to do the canvas wall hangings. Um, I absolutely love these. I'm going to be doing that with the sub that sublimation canvas, which is in my shop. This is a 100% um, polyester high uh, art grade canvas. So this is not denier fabric. Um, I know that Condi sells denier. There are some pretty key differences uh, between denier and the sub that canvas. The main one is the weight and the usage. So denier is typically used for boat seat covers and awnings. Um, I definitely think it's a good choice like if you're doing some canvas wraps, uh, like canvas photo wraps and that sort of thing. But in terms of a canvas wall hanging, especially one that you might be putting outside, uh, which a lot of my customers do want theirs to hang outside on their door. And actually the one I'm making today, I'm gonna hang out my door. So with that in mind, you want something that's a bit more durable. And I actually just upgraded the canvas because um, a new option came available from the manufacturer I buy from. So the one that I have been, that I just like finished the last roll of is 10 ounce and the new one is actually 11 ounce. So those of you who are getting um, any of the orders that shipped out yesterday or are shipping out today, tomorrow and Friday, you're gonna be getting the newer one, which is slightly thicker. Um, the price hasn't changed even though it's thicker. It's just that they had that one available and um, I thought the more weight was definitely a better option for some of this stuff. So um, the canvas doesn't have any kind of a coating on it. So when you are using it outside, you wanna use UV protectant spray. Uh, you can pick that up at any hardware store. I use one called Rayblock, which I just order on the Home Depot website and then pick it up in store. Um, and that's pretty much it as far as that goes. So if you get the canvas, turn around. Uh, you can see it's got kind of a shimmery on one side. It's a little bit duller on the other. You're gonna sublimate on the shimmery side. And the big question is always the difference between art store canvas and um, something like this. So as you should know, sublimation cannot be done on cotton. Sublimation requires polyester or some sort of polyester substance for it to, for the ink to bond to. And that's because polyester is a 
uh, porous man-made fiber while cotton is a non-porous natural fiber and the way that sublimation works is the high heat opens the pores of the polyester and then that converts the ink to a gas and it gets trapped inside the pores when it cools and voila all the beautiful stuff that we make so a lot of the subgroups talk about using um, polyacrylic so this is regular art store canvas double primed gesso you can see it's kind of beigey on the back because that's what normal art store canvas looks like and this was actually just a piece off of uh, the one that was originally on this frame and i did this with three coats of polyacrylic i let it dry for 24 hours and i heat cured it for 60 seconds this coloring in this picture is the absolute best i've gotten i've posted several pictures comparing um, in in our group and um, you can see that like when you look at all the different pictures the colors are not nearly as vibrant so one of the issues with doing uh, the polyacrylic method is that you're not going to get consistent results and that's just the unfortunate reality which is why there's better options so I mean you can even see these two compared to each other this is the um, this is the sub that sublimation canvas and again this is the gesso primed canvas with polyacrylic and you can kind of see it's got the sheen and stuff on it from when I put the polyacrylic on it. Um, and you like the colors, there's no comparison. Those colors look way more amazing. And then if you just saw the other tutorial, you know that this one is the sub that polytex over top of just traditional gesso primed canvas so that it has a polyester uh, intermediary medium to um to stick to and you can see uh this has more of a fabric look obviously because the sub that polytex is fabric and just you can use the group tags to see the different videos of sub that polytex but this is it you can see it's pretty sheer i just adhered it right onto the canvas just like the directions say and um you can see the colors on that are great too and basically the difference between something like uh, the sub that sublimation canvas and using the poly tags is um, the color vibrancy is really the same overall it's just that this has the woven texture and then this has the cloth texture so it kind of depends on what you're going for but if you've seen my videos you know that one of the big things is I always promote working with what you have because you don't want to keep increasing your overhead if you don't have to and that revolving overhead which is the amount of money that's into your supplies uh, waiting for it to be eaten up by people buying your products uh, when it, that's high your business suffers so your goal is always to try and keep that low which is why I always present this option as well so that's just kind of a color comparison um, between this and then as you can see these other ones and this okay so this is gonna be a pretty quick tutorial um, this is the sublet sublimation canvas I'm going to go ahead and pre-press it now, pre-pressing is important with most stuff that you're going to sublimate because um, it helps get out the moisture that's in the fabric. Moisture leads to shrinking um, and ghosting when it's heated, which is obviously not what any of us want. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this on here. And oops, there's some butcher paper on top because we don't want to scorch it. Be careful. Um, we're just going to heat this for about 20 seconds. We are at 400 degrees, which is the appropriate temperature for a canvas, no matter what kind you're using. Let's see if I can, there we go. Move you guys up a little bit. Still like learning all these little levers on the tripod. There's so many of them. So we should about 30 seconds. You can see, um, see how on the edge, you can see that that is where, you can see the shrinkage in real life, so to speak. Oh, shoot. Okay, so I just used the butcher paper I just used on that reverse canvas tutorial. You can kind of see it. So let me grab a different piece of canvas since I just threw that up. <laughs> Luckily, I had more cuts. Let's try that again. Just a friendly reminder to always use a fresh piece of butcher paper when you start a new project. Unlike what I just did. I actually thought that was a new piece. I didn't realize I'd already used it. <laughs> oh well. 
And for those of you who are always asking, this is why you use butcher paper because the ink bleeds through that sublimation paper and will get all over whatever. And this, you don't use a Teflon sheet without butcher paper. You'll see I use a Teflon sheet on different things, um, but most importantly is always to use butcher paper or parchment paper, something that can create a barrier. Some people even just use copy paper and it works just fine. Okay. So again, you can see the shrinkage in real life right there. So we wanna make sure we press the whole thing so that we get all that moisture right out of the, right out of it. Um, and I'm just doing this on a 15 by 15 press, so this particular part is gonna take a second. And I am gonna show you guys how to piece together a design. If you, I will put the links um, in the top here in the video description after this. Um, but I did a tutorial on how to design, divide a design two weeks ago. As you can see, this is the design that's gonna be a freebie. And I'm gonna show you guys how to paste it together after you have done the separation. Um, all right, there we go. Now I'm not gonna worry too much about this end um, because this, so this particular sheet of canvas, I'm gonna get a little bit of press. This particular sheet of canvas is um, 12 by 18, but we're actually gonna be trimming this down a little bit for uh, the door hanging that we're doing. So, all right, I'm just gonna let that sit there for a second. I'm gonna turn this so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Okay, you guys see this all right? Move a little closer. Okay, so you can see that I divided the design into two pages. This is necessary if your design is bigger than your print space. For me, these were printed on the SG400 on text print R paper using Sublija ink. I printed direct from Inkscape, which is where I did this design. And um, the downfall of Inkscape is that uh, it really can only print eight and a half by 11 or um, either eight and a half by 11 or eight and uh eight and a half by 14 sorry it doesn't have the capability to print larger than that so what we're going to do is when you divide your design i will link these tutorials that i did before you want to make sure there's a little bit of an overlap so what we're going to do is um we're going to trim down one piece of this and then we're going to line it up uh we're going to trim down the top one so that we can line it up over top of the bottom one so i've got my little guillotine paper slicer this is just from Walmart. It was, I don't even know, 25 bucks. I don't particularly care for this one because this part's plastic. And uh, my previous one was all metal, like an old school teacher one. And I definitely preferred that one. So we went ahead and cut, cut off. I cut a little more than necessary um, because we're gonna do the overlap. So, you know, it's not really the end of the world. So the way that I do this, let me get this out of the way so I don't <laughs> drop it on my hand. So the way that I do this is just, we're gonna line it up. And once we get it lined up, we're gonna put a piece of double-sided tape. So let me see if I can get you guys a little bit closer. Okay. So with the overlap, you're basically making sure that you have got everything lined up perfectly there we go so I always like to use something handy like a paperweight as you see my videos you know that my paperweights are just objects I have floating around so I'm gonna put that there so we kind of have we're kind of keeping it straight and I always just start with a little piece of um, whoop, a little piece of double-sided tape this is nothing special this is this sorry <laughs> This is regular double-sided tape from Walmart. I think I got a pack of three or four for like five bucks. Um, it's nothing special. It doesn't need to be heat sensitive. And um, none of that really matters because it's gonna be on the inside of the paper. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick a little piece right on here. And then we're gonna go ahead and line this back up. All right. And if you do this properly, this is the, the big thing. If you do this properly, 
you're not going to have to worry about having lines in your design. And that is, of course, the most important thing that we are all trying to achieve when doing bigger designs. And I do this all the time. Um, okay, so we're going to do that. And then we're going to go ahead and, you know, stick a bigger piece. I'm going to kind of turn it because it's a little hard for me to see. And again, always make sure that you are actually lined up. Okay. So there we go. So we've got our design all as one piece. Pretty easy, right? Um, this is honestly a pretty basic thing. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of just trim around this because I want to make sure that I get this uh, size on the canvas properly. And since this is for my own house, I uh, didn't worry too much. I actually did not center the design on the page before I printed, so I messed up that little piece right there, cut off some berries. So just make sure you adhere to the margins, the print margins of your, pay of your uh, printer which I did not, obviously. <laughs> so here's our design. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back around. Now the nice part about Canvas is once you've pre-pressed it, um, it doesn't really need a whole lot of anything else. And I don't worry too much about whether or not, um, I don't worry about like taping this or, or I don't worry about spraying this, I do tape it usually. So I'm gonna go ahead and Turn this this way so I can see it a little better. Try and get it relatively straight. I'm actually planning on cutting this down uh, for the particular type of sign that I'm doing. Um, so it's okay if it's not perfectly centered. I'm sorry, I gotta have more lights. <laughs> it's a little dreary out today um, because there's that hurricane coming up the coast. So. I'm gonna use my little laser level. Oh, here, sorry. I'm gonna use my little laser level to make sure that it's straight. And we are using this against the bottom of the letters of the word welcome. There we go. I absolutely love this laser level. It's from Walmart. It's only, I don't know, $11. Um, not some expensive gadget at all. You've seen me use it in almost every video I do. Uh, me just a second. Okay, my heat tape was buried. Use that as paperweight. I need a paperweight because I got a fan nearby uh, blowing on me. This is just heat tape off Amazon. I'm not really aware that there's any difference in heat tape. Heat tape is heat tape as far as I know. Um, these are, I don't know, two rolls or something for five bucks. It's pretty cheap. Okay. So we've got our design taped on. We went ahead and pre-pressed to help alleviate the issue with shrinkage, uh, which causes ghosting. And We've got our piece of butcher paper that I used to kind of flatten it out earlier, so not one that has ink on it. And we're gonna go ahead, you wanna have medium firm pressure, 400 degrees. This only needs 60 seconds, but if your heat press loses temperature, and if you see, because I have a cheaper heat press, it just lost two degrees, actually three degrees, there we go. Um, so I have this set at 70 seconds to give it a little bit extra time to make up for the fact that it's losing that temperature. So that's something you always wanna pay attention to because a lot of people don't get the same results because they're missing that one little thing. Um, so you can accommodate your heat, uh, your heat press losing temperature by either increasing the temperature by five to 10 degrees or by increasing the time that, uh, that it's working. So, and if you're watching this, I mean, it's still at 395 and now it's going up to 396, up to back up to 400, probably by the time we're done. Um, luckily 10 degrees doesn't make a heat, five, 10 degrees doesn't make a huge difference with the canvas. You're going to get good results regardless, but it is important to pay attention to that. Um, that was a problem I noticed I was having with my doormats and I did a live video that just did not go well for <laughs> several reasons. Um, 
and one of them was that, was that I realized that I hadn't adjusted my pressure and I hadn't handled that. Woo! That's hot. All right, let me get this off of here because it is very hot. All right. Look at how gorgeous those colors are. Okay, hold on. I love this design, just so you guys know. So again, this is going to be a freebie later today. And let me kind of tilt you guys down a little bit. Okay. And um, you can see, I'm going to be doing, if you guys saw, Angelo did a tutorial uh, last week, or I think it was the end of the week before, where he shows you guys how to how to put um, text inside of a shape. I'm actually gonna do one this week, but I'm gonna show you how I did. Uh, I'm, gonna I'm gonna show you the same feature, but I'm gonna show you how to do it with text. So you see how it's lighter in some of these places and like textured? That's because I typed the word and then took it out of the pumpkin um, to get that fun, fun texture and look for you. So I'm gonna show you guys how I did that uh, in a tutorial. Probably this weekend. Um, I'll put up my schedule for design tutorials um, later today as well. All right, so now that our canvas is ready, it's time to turn it into a wall hanging. So the first thing you're going to need is some wood strips. These wood strips, um, this is going on the inside, so I didn't even bother taking the sticker off. But these are from Home Depot. They come in a four foot length. Uh, you can't actually see what that says, but it's about 257. Yeah, 257, 247 for a four foot length. And then I went ahead and cut them into 12 inch lengths. So you can kind of see, there they are. So because these are 12 inch, we're gonna have to trim down. Oh, well, um, I think I must, I think I already pre-trimmed the canvas. But if it's, you know, you might like it to have um, a little more space on the sides. If that's the case, you can always trim down your canvas. I just trim mine with a rotary blade. It works out pretty easily. So with this one, I wanted to put this one on my door. And so I'm actually going to put this a little higher up than what I have it on here. Because I don't want it to be too big on my door, if that makes sense. And when you're doing this, um, like you could put the name down here see when you're making these for someone else to sell in your shop you can put the design up a little bit higher and then put the name down here and the reason why I didn't do that is because um, my housemate and I are not a couple <laughs> so I didn't really want to put either of our names on here although both of our last names do start with a C so I did think about doing that but anyways I'll make sure to put the name of this font as well so that you guys can match it if you are gonna do one of these and you want to put the names on for your customers so I just want this to be a little bit shorter because it is going on there so we're gonna go ahead and my laptop's kind of in the way okay so I think I gotta turn you guys a little bit to give you a better view Okay, so assembling these is relatively quick and easy. Uh, the things that you're gonna need are you're gonna need wood glue. This is my favorite because it dries probably about 20, 30 minutes. Um, you can also use hot glue, which of course dries almost instantly. Um, you're gonna want light duty stapler. You're going to need um, two different sizes of staples. I actually buy mine in a sampler pack. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Oh, here it is. It's right where it belongs, inside the drawer where I put all that stuff. So I get this little sampler pack because we're going to use the one quarter inch ones um, to attach the twine for hanging on the inside. If you saw the last tutorial I did where I made these uh, hanging wall canvas, <laughs> You know that it did not go very smoothly at all so I'm glad this one's going a little better 
So I'm gonna go ahead and swap out the staples in my staple gun. Because currently I have five eighths ones, which we're still gonna need those ones too. Just not for the first part. Okay. All right, so I got those swapped out. So once you've decided where your wood pieces are gonna go and you've got them all centered, Uh, you, the easiest thing to do is just kind of mark your canvas. And because we have this extra down here, I'm going to be cutting that off anyways. So I'm actually going to mark, um, I'm going to mark it there, but you can also just mark it with a piece of masking tape, anything really that will help you, um, know where to line this up next time and definitely make sure it's straight. <laughs> That's probably the most important part, especially when you're selling these. Um, okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and mark up here as well. So I make sure it's straight. Okay. So again, I'm making this one a little bit smaller because I want it to go on my front door and because I don't have a name or anything on the end of it. And actually, I'm going to move this down a little bit. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of trim down by my little, my little marks that I made to make my life easier. And of course, if you're doing this the full size, you can just line up the edges um, accordingly. So it's not such a big deal. All right. So what you want to do is once you get it right straight, you're going to pick them both straight and even, I should say, you're going to pick them both up and flip it over. Okay. This is where our handy dandy uh, paperweights come in. In this case, we're using cross ray. <laughs> so I'm going to put it there. Again, always make sure that you're lined up straight. Always double check. It like honestly does not, does not hurt to double check. Double check, triple check. It'll save you a lot of time. Um, all right. So I think I got this. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of wood glue. You don't need a lot of this. Um, wood glue is one of those things. A little goes a long way. I just put some dots on there. I'm going to line that right back up. Make sure it's centered. Okay. I'm gonna slide this up just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna tip this over, flip this over, sorry. So it's already starting to stick a little bit, which is great. And I didn't cut this um, perfectly straight, so that's why it looks like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and take my, since this has got the one quarter inch staples, and I'm just gonna give this two quick staples to make sure it stays in place. And when you use the one quarter inch, it doesn't come through the other side. All right. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing at the top. Um, make sure that we're all lined up. Oh, I gotta trim that a little bit. Okay. Make sure that we are all lined up. Make sure that we are straight. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and again, put a little bit of glue on the back. So you see I kinda did it towards the bottom. That's because you obviously don't want it oozing out the top. All right, you guys see that all right? Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and press it and hold it for a second because we are gonna want to flip this. It's a little bit trickier on the top. I'm gonna kind of turn it like that. This glue does like give a hold pretty quickly, which is why I love the tight bond glue so much. You can get this at Home Depot. Um, I think Walmart carries it too. And so again, on, but on this side, we're gonna do the staples as well, but we are going to put a little bit 
of our baling twine because this is what we're going to hang it with. You don't need a lot. Um, I usually recommend doing just over the width of whatever the design is or whatever the canvas is. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this on the end. Can you guys see it? Nope, I'm off the camera. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stick it on each end and staple it. Once again, with these one quarter inch staples. And I like my string to be about a half inch from the edge of the canvas. So there's that, or the half inch from the edge of the wood. So we're gonna do that and okay. So we've got our hanging piece, and now we're just going to repeat the process of a little bit of glue um, and putting in the back pieces because you want to have two on each side to help hold this nice and straight and flat. Um, but what we're going to do, you can use glue, super glue, uh, E600, um, or you can do the wood glue and reinforce it with staples. I prefer to reinforce it with staples, it's more guaranteed that it's gonna stay together, but if you're looking for a different type of finished look, then that might not be the option you wanna choose. So, I put 5 8 inch staples in there, cause that will go through um, both sides here. I'm gonna go ahead and, you guys see that okay? I'm gonna line that right up, make sure that it's all even. The one thing you gotta be careful of with wood glue is that you don't use too much because it can easily make your wood slide all over the place when you're trying to hold it in place. <laughs> so, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and do a couple of well-placed staples to connect the two pieces of wood. And you can see they are nice and bonded together and then the glue will help them stay together just perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. And same thing, we're gonna go ahead and put some glue on here. Now it helps to put a little extra staples when you're doing the top one to accommodate for that string being there because you're not gonna get the same tight bond uh, that you got on the bottom because of the gap. So I usually do one pretty close to the string. Um, Uh, we've got our little wall hanging we'll go out here it's raining already early parts of the incoming hurricane oh I gotta get some tape but my plan is is to hang it on the door like that but for the moment I'll put it there so you guys can get a nice clear view of it and that is how you do the hanging wall canvases you can of course do these in all types of sizes um, these are great for entryways. They're great for little girls rooms. There's just so many options that you can have with these canvas wall hangings for both inside and outside use. Uh, this one I'll spray with the Ray block and it'll be just fine out here in the Southern sun. And here's some mums. Here's Jasper. He's all ready for Halloween. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, I'm going to move the doormat tutorial because I can't find the design I printed, uh, but I'll be doing the pillow tutorial at noon and followed by the napkin tutorial. And then I'll get all the links updated and make a post with the various freebies. These freebies will be available for a few days so that everyone can get the opportunity to take advantage of them and any other specials and all the new designs that are up in my shop. All right, I will see you guys later.